One of my favorite quotes of all time was actually from the movie The Dark Knight, which came out, I think it came out around 2008. It's when, uh, Heath, Ledger, it's when Heath Ledger played the Joker. And it was during the hospital scene where right before, you know, the Joker blew up the hospital and stuff like where he made a quote where he said, nobody panics when things are going according to plan. Not even when the plan is horrifying. And, you know, like that, that line to me was one of the coldest, but also just, just one of the most honest and just, just, I I can't even explain just how deep that line hits. Because again, you could apply that to so many aspects of this world, but even in the context of talking about the Ravens, you could apply that when you talk about their philosophy for when it comes to which players they prioritize and which um, positions they prioritize compared to which positions and players they just completely just have, have no, they don't value at all. Because recent, recently, as, as all of you know, the trade deadline has now passed and they didn't go out and get any other receiver, but they did sign Roquan Smith. Now, I have nothing against Roquan Smith. He's a good player. I mean, like he, I mean, just last year, he, um, his players, um, other NFL players have such high respects for him that they ranked him 84 on, they ranked him um, the 84th best player on the top 100 list. He's a two time second team all pro. Like even last, even right now, actually, he's leading the league in tackles. So, like, it's not, a, a terrible uh, trade like they gave up a, a second and a fifth round pick for him but again the issue that I have and that many other Ravens fans are having is the fact that when it comes to defensive players they're willing to make the necessary sacrifice and, and over invest in defense but then offensively they have nothing but excuses and they they don't use that same they don't use those same excuses when it's time to talk about defense because again i'm not saying them getting roquan smith is a bad thing but what i'm saying is patrick queen was is playing a lot better than ravens fans give him credit for if i'm not mistaken tyus bowles is supposed to be coming back soon Again, if I'm not mistaken, David Ojabo is supposed to be, you know, supposed to be making um, his debut this season. Josh Barnes has been a solid contributor. Like you have you had just like how people are quick to say, oh, we have all the receivers you need. You had all you had all the, the linebackers you need. You had. But again, they care so much about defense because they're still stuck in the old paradigm. So they're willing to admit that enough is never enough when it's time for defense. But with offense, they try to act as if there's a limit and they try to act as if they need to stay in this one. They, they need to just cap it out at this at, oh, we got this many mediocre receivers and that should be good enough instead of saying, oh, let's just keep going over the top. And to me, I think that's I think this is very hypocritical. Again, I'm not saying this is a bad signing, but this shouldn't have been a priority. Now I know many I know many of you are big Deshaun Jackson fans, but again, we don't know what we're going to get with Deshaun Jackson. We still don't know. And time and time again, the Ravens go out here, get older players. Everybody gets super hype and has these in some cases just unrealistic expectations. For what is gonna happen and how much this player is gonna contribute and then when that player does next to nothing then you guys act as if it never happened and go right back to talking about how we still need to get more defensive players and that doesn't make sense to me that again that does not make sense to me and again i think this is extremely hypocritical and i it blows my mind that on the Ravens YouTube channel, they put up a video saying, oh, um, the fact that they went and signed Roquan Smith means they're in win now mode. No, you're not. You're not in win now mode. You're not in win now mode. 
If you were in win now mode, you would have went out and go, got gotten a young stud at receiver who is still in their prime. They just announced today that Rashad Bateman is going to miss the rest of the season. He's getting surgery. Mark Andrews is hurt. You don't know if he's coming back next game. You don't. We don't know when exactly he's going to be back and back at 100%. So you have a bunch of second and third tier receivers and uh, a, um, you know, a young tight end in Isaiah Likely who they could make stuff happen but you, you you again there's no stud there's no stud left on this team and even regardless of, of Rashad Bateman's injury we have to like call a spade a spade Rashad Bateman drops a lot of passes and he's injury prone he's he's showing obviously we have high hopes for him he shows a lot of upside but he he's not, even he when he was playing this season was not looking like he was actually the answer and he was still your best option. And your best option just, you know, he's he just got hurt again. And he's out for the rest of the year. And their solution for that was to only only sign Deshaun Jackson. That's that. that it, again, like I said in the last video, it, I, I, why would you only stop at that one signing? If they would have signed Deshaun Jackson and then went, in, went out and got somebody else, then I would say, all right, yeah, like they're trying to make a, a serious effort. But they're not trying to get anybody else. And it blows my mind that you have Ravens fans who, whenever you talk about any of the other receivers they could have gotten, a lot of Ravens fans will try to um, snub those players and say, oh, he ain't nobody. He's mid. He's mid. Like, like for example... When when people bring up the possibility of them uh, of them of them almost having or could have having, uh, like when people bring up the fact that oh maybe they could have traded for Chase Claypool, you got a bunch of Ravens fans saying oh he's mid he didn't do anything this year. Chase Claypool is better than this entire receiving room. Whether you want to admit that or not, it's mind blowing to me that Ravens fans have this overinflated sense of how good. The receivers on this team are but then when it's time to talk about bringing in players who are actually better than them people are quick to say they're not good enough whether you like it or not whether you think chase claypool is good or not he would he would easily outperform this every receiver that's on this team right now and you can say the same thing for about, about brandon cooks jerry judy robbie anderson dj moore whoever not whoever, but, you know, there's a long list of players who are better than the receivers on this team. Look, look, um, like before uh, the trade deadline, I wasn't going to say we had the worst receiving room because I thought teams like maybe the Bears, you could say, had a worse one. But now the Bears have Chase Claypool. They have that other guy, Mooney. And while to you and to a lot of people that might not sound very impressive, that's still better than what we have to offer. Like, I, I, it, it, it's mind blowing to me that people just don't really want to accept that. But uh, to make, take it back to to Roquan Smith, and and the hypocrisy of this of what I believe is a very hypo, what I believe is the hypocrisy of this move is are the Ravens ready to pay Roquan Smith? Because a lot of people keep telling me that. We shouldn't go out and get a receiver because, oh, this is going to cost too much. That's going to cost too much. Listen, Roquan Smith is a 25-year-old stud at linebacker who is one of the best linebackers in the entire NFL right now. He's leading the league in tackles. Even if he comes to the Ravens and doesn't do anything for the rest of the year, he's still going to demand 20 to $25 million next year. Are you ready to pay that? Are you ready to pay that? And knowing how the Ravens are, ironically enough, they probably would be ready to pay that. But the thing that's so interesting to me is when it's all said and done, are you going to hold this defense to a higher standard to actually expect them to win games? No, you're not going to. You're not going to. Because when it's all said and done, when we get bounced out in the first round, nobody's going to look and say, well, Roquan Smith should have done more. Nobody's going to look and say Patrick Queen should have done more. Nobody's going to look and say any of these players on defense should have done more. Nobody's going to do that. 
they're going to simply say, well, Lamar and this offense should have done more. You're out here, you're out here putting together, uh, uh, you're out here shopping at Dollar Tree for offensive players. For the most part, you're, you're shopping at Dollar Tree, but then when it's time for defense, you're going to these hot. You're going to the hot, the most expensive high-end boutique you could find in, in the state of Maryland, and that's a big problem because again, it continues to highlight the the cognitive dissonance that the that we that the Ravens are, are not trying to acknowledge right now when it comes to their philosophy. They're still stuck in this mindset. That, oh, we just got to run the ball and play defense. That is a very outdated mindset. Whether y'all want to accept that or not. This is a new day and age in the NFL. You're not bringing back the 2000s Ravens. I don't know why Eric DaCosta and this front office is so damn hard-headed. Like, I don't know why they insist on being so stupid. You, and I don't know why the fans insist on being so stupid. You are not bringing back the 2000s Ravens defense. Ray Lewis is the best linebacker of all time. Nobody is coming in. Nobody's coming in here and take, and filling those shoes, though. Not even Roquan Smith. Nobody's filling those shoes. Ed Reed is the greatest safety of all time. Nobody's coming in here and filling those shoes. They're, not, they're never walking through that door again. It's not happening. You're not stumbling. You're not going to just. It's not happening. The probability of that ever happening again is, is, is zero. It's not happening. I don't know why Ravens fans insist in this front office. I don't know why they insist on sticking to this idea that yeah let's keep doubling down on a method that hasn't worked in over a decade it's been outdated not only is it outdated because again the the probability of you getting those type of hall of fame players on the same team again is so low but also simply because of the fact that the referees throw flags out for anything y'all are taking things you guys aren't even looking at things in the proper context you, you could get a flag for sneezing too hard at this point. Referees are throwing flags out for everything. You think that they would allow any defense to, to, to play with the, with, the same, with the same level of intensity that the 2000s Ravens defense played? They, they will never allow that again. Because again, like I said, they throw flags for everything. But also because if we're being honest, from a business perspective, and I and I don't think it's just the referees who don't want to see these defenses be elite. Also, the owners and the, the fans themselves don't want to see these defenses be elite. Nobody wants to watch a game where the final score is six to three. Nobody wanna watch a game where the final score is three to zero. Nobody wants to watch a game where the final score is nine to six. Nobody wants to watch those games. That game that we watched a few months ago during the playoffs in the AFC champ, well, not the AFC, in the in the divisional round between the Bills and the the Chiefs. That game was was one of the best games we've seen in years. That game, by many people, was considered a classic. And do you know why it was considered a classic? Do you know why so many people were going so crazy for that game? <laughs> they were going crazy for that game for the simple fact that that game was just a very impressive offensive showing. It was a terrible defensive game. That was not a good game defensively for either team, especially for the Bills. The Bills, at least the Chiefs, they've never had a very good defense in the Patrick Mahomes era. The Bills had the number two ranked defense last year, and they still allowed Patrick Mahomes to go out there, drop 42 points on them, including getting a touchdown with 13 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And then they allowed Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs to go out there in overtime and score and get and, and win the game. You got Buffalo fans that are so butthurt that they are de they they demanded that the rules for overtime be changed. When in reality, nobody wants to call out the fact that hey, their defense wasn't good enough. But that speaks to a bigger, a bigger point. In this day and age, nobody's expecting any of these defenses to hold back elite offenses. Even the good defenses. Again, the Bills last season had the number two ranked defense, and they still couldn't stop an elite offense. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. 
because when it came down to it, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and Pat, combined with Patrick Mahomes were better than everybody else. And the Ravens, whether they, whether they want to accept that or not, you have to adjust to a new reality. But they're trying their best not to. They're still trying to stick to this idea that if they keep trying hard enough, they'll bring back the 2000s Ravens defense. Listen, in the past like 23 or 24 games, this defense has given up like almost 7,000 passing yards. That, like that's the most by any other NFL team in the past like year and a half, two years. This the the 2000 Ravens defense is never coming back. And you adding Roquan Smith ain't going ain't going to make that big of a difference either when it comes to the impact that this defense will have on winning games. All you need in today's NFL is an overpowered offense loaded with rep, loaded with weapons and combine that with the defense that's just good enough to make plays. You already have playmakers on, regardless of my critiques of this defense, you already have playmakers on this defense. You need to get new coaches, but they don't want to do that. You already have the playmakers on defense. You just need to get new coaches and to get more studs on offense. It, 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 it's, it blows my mind. Because again, when they blow another lead, nobody's going to look and say, oh, they wasted all these picks on defense. No. What are they going to do? They're going to say, look, they're going to say, oh, Lamar and this offense should have done better. But nobody's going to talk about the fact that, listen, you 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 traded two picks as, as much as Eric DaCosta's as much as Eric DaCosta loves hoarding all these unnecessary picks that end up being a waste because he's not good at drafting, you gave away two picks for a guy who's supposed to be a superstar or supposed to be a, bo a borderline star who, once he came to your team, you guys stifled him. Nobody's going to say that. If that ends up being the case, nobody's going to say that. Again, we've had multiple blown leads this year. And people might say, oh, well, you know, oh, the offense didn't do this and they didn't do that. Okay, but guess what? The offense doesn't have as much resources invested in it as the, in, as the defense. And again, y'all are so obsessed with bringing back the 2000s Ravens defense. So guess what? If you go up 17 points against the Giants, even if the offense struggles the rest of the game, you need to close that out if y'all want to be the 2000s Ravens defense. The 2000s Ravens defense would never blow a 17-point lead to the Bills, a 17-point lead to the Giants, a 21-point lead to the Dolphins. The 2000 Ravens defense would never blow those leads. And the 2000 Ravens defense had freaking Trent Dilfer as their quarterback. And they still, if they got up that much, they would have never blown those leads. It could have been the first quarter. That 2000s Ravens defense would have shut the entire game down for the next three quarters. So again, I'm not saying this is a bad trade, obviously. I don't think it's a bad trade. But my point still stands that this shouldn't have been the end of what the Ravens did before the trade deadline. People keep making excuses for why they can't go out and get more get more get more elite talent on offense. You saying, "Oh, well, you know, you can't mortgage your future." The Rams have been mortgaging their future for like 10 years now. Nothing's changed. They're suffering no consequences. The Dolphins are mortgage, mortgaging their future right now. They're doing just fine. They're looking like they might be a dark horse to win the Super Bowl right now cuz they still even with them going to, to get Tyreek Hill this season and paying him 30 million dollars a year, they still Went out and got somebody, um, who was it, Bradley Chubb? So there's no excuses. Y'all keep acting like the front office for the Ravens are geniuses. No, they're not. You have a million and one draft picks every year and you pick bad picks. You don't like signing free agents because you, you act as, you don't like signing uh, expensive, like elite talent a free agent because you're saying it's too expensive. But then after all these years, what, well, what do you have to show for it? What do you have to? Sh what you have to show for it is you never have any cap space, and you never have stars, and you're never truly a contender. 
and the last time you were a serious threat was freaking 2012. That's what you have to show for it. That's what you have to show for it. What you have to show for it is you just wasted a rookie contract for a franchise quarterback who even without weapons still was able to win an MVP. And you didn't have enough common sense to say, okay, let's go out there, get him as, let's go out there, build a wall around him on the O-line and get him studs to play with. You didn't have enough sense to do that. So like I said, so I still have high hopes for the season, but again, we're not Super Bowl contenders. Obje- like realistically speaking, in my heart of hearts, I'm going to still like hope that we make a big run. Like I said, I still predicted that we would be 13 and four to end the season. But that doesn't mean we're truly contenders at this point. Because again, when it comes down to it, how, are we, 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 we're not going to be able to keep up. In most cases, I'm not going to say we're not because we, we could beat any team. We have double digit leads in all these games. But it's going to be very difficult to keep up with the firepower of the Bills, of the Dolphins, like of all these all these teams. Shoot, even the Vikings are looking like a serious threat right now, man. There's a lot of teams out here with very serious firepower on both sides of the ball. Whereas with the Ravens, like their only concern is attempting to get firepower on defense and then on offense they want to go bargain hunting you know so that's all I got to say about this again like I said it's not a bad trade but considering the context of what's going on with Rashad Bateman getting hurt Mark Andrews being hurt you know um, Gus Edwards um, he got he hurt his hamstring I don't know if it was serious or not J.K. Dobbins you know he got hurt again you know, like, what, like, all, my, like, so, yeah, so, so let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below, and let me know on a scale of one to ten, what do you think of this trade?